We're gonna make yogurt. And I've never done this before, but we done a lot of different things. We've uh, cultured yeast, uh, germinated spores, and the way I see this is we're making a liquid culture for yogurt. So we're gonna use this brand. We saw the omega-3, we decided to like, we decided that we like that, omega-3 is good. Uh, it's uh, fat free. And there's all this stuff added, vitamins, A, D, added, ultra pasteurized. I'm under the impression that you don't need to cook it up, uh, pasteurize it since it's pasteurized in here. There, all I'm really focused on is, is if it has lactose. So we're gonna, I'm gonna reuse this, but I'm going to pour it in the, uh, in this container just so it can uh, heat up in the microwave. I don't know if it's true with uh, yogurt cultures, but when I was culturing yeast, we would I would rinse out the dishes that I'm going to use with um, with just hot water. They always warned that dish soap or regular soap could um, inhibit the growth of yeast. So I just did that from the yeast experience. I'm trying not to breathe on anything, and I'm trying not to. Um, make contact with what the ye, um, the yogurt might touch. It's a little tough. So I'm holding this on the side just because there'll be yogurt being poured back in. Now we're gonna use a microwave. My mom came up with the idea and I liked it because it's super quick. It's otherwise Use the microwave or uh, spend time waiting for it on the oven. I like I said I, I like the idea. All right, we just I bought this container and it worked out. So after we pour the pour the milk back in here, we're just gonna put it on top of the um, refrigerator. We've warmed it up for a little over four minutes and I'm not using any thermometer because the idea is this stuff is basically just got to get to body temperature if anything. It feels like it's a little bit warmer to the touch so I'm guessing it's over 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Just cause we don't got a funnel, I'm gonna go ahead and attempt to pour it in here. Let's do this real quick. Spilled a little. I'm gonna report back into here, just for ease of use. And after I pour all this milk in, I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to mix the last cup with the yogurt and pour it into the this milk container. The idea being, uh, we're going to culture the yogurt in the container that the milk came in. So let me do that now. Would have probably been smarter to. Um, to have let this warm up as well, but this one's been refrigerated, refrigerated. And it's, I'm just choosing this because it tastes good. And it's got live culture, so don't want to get anything that doesn't have uh, as uh, inactive or pasteurized. The idea is we're culturing. Uh, live bacteria so they say a teaspoon for about half a 
gallon. So I'll give it a shot and make it two heaping tablespoons or or not too picky about how much I'm putting in. I kind of dedicated that entire, you know what, I'll just do the whole thing. I bought this whole thing for the sole purpose to make some more out of it. These are all right, they're like a dollar each, so I'm not too worried. And as you can tell, there's no vegan uh, purpose behind this. It's just to get more, uh, make more yo milk yogurt, cow milk yogurt. And that's really just the idea, is just to save money. This thing costs like a dollar per cup. The milk carton costs like four bucks. So I figure it's just going to be um, going to be cost effective if we just do this a little bit. We do it our own and we were saying to ourselves, we can definitely do this on our own. Now I would I can imagine this would be done easier with a funnel. So you got a funnel. I think we'll make this process a little bit more easier and less splashing and less spilling. Okay. Maybe I should have just mixed it into the matter and cut itself. Now I've seen people put even the yogurt in the blender. So the only, as far as mixing and shaking, that's while it's while it's um, being uh, cultured. It's while it's uh, you're giving it time. So we're gonna give it probably probably just a little bit time. I'm gonna say this last bit and. Uh, That'll be a st starter for something else. I'm just going to refold. So I'm going to use this container. I'm going to close it. It got a little bit bubbled up. I'm assuming from the, from the uh, heat and kind of the mixture of it. So after this, I'm going to ceram wrap it and keep it in room temperature. And I'm just going to keep it above the fridge where it's... Um, it's a little bit warmer, but we checked the inside temperature in here, and it is just um, under 80 degrees Fahrenheit. So after six hours, I'm going to check it out. Eight hours, I'm assuming it's going to take that long. After that, uh, put it in the fridge, and we'll hopefully have a half gallon of yeast. Instead of putting the uh, culture in the on top of the fridge, um, my mom decided that the oven should be good enough to uh, uh, incubate in. So our incubator is the oven because it has a um, it's natural gas and it has a pilot light. So we opened up the the oven. I got the the little batch over here. And I got the and we opened up the oven and it was um, warm in here. So I said that. Is definitely um, good enough. It's probably uh, 100, around 100 degrees Fahrenheit in there, just from feeling the air in there. So we got this one out, we checked it out. So this is six hours later. We put it in at 10 last last night, and now it's four o'clock in the morning. And here it is. I guess we'll. Just stir it up with a spoon, and just to show what it that it is. So there's a there's some liquid on the top. It'll be um, it's really clear. It's like yellow. You can use that. Put it in another container, and when you get your next batch, you can use it. So what I'm gonna do with this one is put it in the fridge. So it is yogurt it's a little bit liquid it could culture it a little bit longer or I can smell it right now that's another thing smell it and 
it smells like yogurt. It's that. It's um. Some people will say that it's um. The they'll drain out the white. I mean the um. The whey is what it's called. It's the liquid on top, and it's that liquid will be reabsorbed into the yogurt when you put it in the refrigerator. So we can put this back in the refrigerator, and if you want it a little bit thicker, you can have it uh, uh, incubate some more, and probably just end up doing that is incubate it probably check on it again at 8 but as right now it is it's good enough to eat well we were saying should we eat it now and I said well let's just let's let it absorb that way and um, put it in the fridge so this one I guess was, I'll open it up too I'm trying not to breathe on it still but you could imagine you could get well, what I've done is separate it this much. So, from this, I'll start another uh, half gallon. So, go ahead and look in here. And you can see that it is full of yogurt. And it's got a little bit of that liquid. Just This is just a fraction of it. But this whole thing is filled up to right here, and it is full of yogurt, and it's warm. So um, most people like their yogurt cold, so go ahead and put it in the fridge. It will reabsorb that liquid. And um, But some people, I've heard, there, some people will, uh, will use like uh, almond milk. So, uh, and it, the almond milk doesn't have too much sugar. So some people will add honey, and some people say, "Well, honey is sterile." When there's any sugar in a high enough concentration, I mean it's not mixed well with um, that much water, or um, if it's um, there's a lot of sugar and it's highly diluted into the water. Um, it, any sugar will be, be become sterile, meaning nothing will be able to grow in it. Now, if you dilute the honey enough, um, there will be um, there won't be that much sugar in the mixture. So, just because you add honey to your almond milk, it doesn't mean it's going to sterilize the almond milk. It doesn't mean it's going to inhibit growth to microorganisms. The bees use that high concentration of sugar in their honey because that's where they uh, make um, they have the uh, little bees <laughs> growing in it in the honeycomb and there's all that honey in there and they want it sterile so that the bees can uh, uh, can incubate in it so if you put honey in this stuff I can imagine it'll be thicker this this you know this is regular cow milk so yogurt will fully grow through it if you um, put honey in your almond milk it will um, help it grow some more that's what all this stuff grows on this grew on the lactose lactose is like glucose fructose dextrose all of those are sugars lactose is milk sugar, uh, sugar from milk and that yogurt, it, it, any microorganism, yeast, um, the, the microorganisms in this yogurt, uh, the, um, anything that, that they all like sugar. Everything, a lot of, you know, water and sugar. A lot of things live off of water and sugar. So that's really the core ingredient in any, any of this stuff. But it tastes as you know, I personally like the taste of milk and sugar. So if you're, some people have re reported saying, I got um, the, my yogurt and it smelled like alcohol. That's probably because there was uh, yeast somehow mixed in it. Maybe mixing dough and didn't wash your hands and started handling this stuff and making contact with the same surface that would contact the yogurt. Uh, microorganisms 
and that will um, uh, ferment the milk or whatever liquid culture you got, and it'll have it um, create, you know, alcohol. There's probably other organisms out there that create alcohol, unless it just had that similar smell. There's microorganisms on the skin or natural uh, flora on the skin. Whole point of this yogurt is to re um, um, to rejuvenate a higher population of that microflora. So there's stuff. I got this brand because I saw that there was a, a large amount. It has a S thermophilus, L bulgaricus, L acidophilus. Uh, by uh, by by fitus and L cassi cassi cassii and those are natural microorganisms found in the intestines um, uh, and I, don't ask me where it comes from it's from a human obviously and I read in 1983 they uh, got it from a, a culture from inside a healthy human and then put that on, you know, culture that themselves in their labs and then put that in the yogurt. Uh, 1905, uh, uh, scientists went to Bul Bulgaria and because they were eating yogurt, a product of yogurt, and started labeling uh, that uh, Al Bulgaricus. And that was in 1905, so he's got that from uh, Bulgaria. I don't know how the Bulgarians got the original uh, cultures. So, but we got this one from the yogurt. All of this is dairy products. So if you're not afraid of they're making yogurt out of dairy products, it's as simple as this. And we use the oven. Everyone, there's people who've used regular room temperature air uh, on top of the fridge because on top of the fridge, it's a little bit hotter and uh, then room temperature because all that heat from the, the refrigerator coming up so there's it's all, all of this was you saw there was no thermometer there was no um, hash, we didn't cook the milk first and that's I'm say I'm not saying that's not you know that that's wrong I'm just showing that there is this method where you can even use the same container without pasteurizing you just got to make sure your hands are clean uh, I would even say that to increase the success rate, you could use um, rubber gloves and have um, and don't breathe on on the stuff. Um, there's microflora from the mouth. You'll end up incubating that. You touch it with direct contact with your skin, and it'll be you'll be uh, cultivating the microorganisms on the from your skin, and then you'll be. Um, you know, you'll have something out in there growing with the yogurt strains. So that's the only reason why I, I put this little thing on there because I, I think about yeast growing, they create carbon dioxide and it, it will fizz and overflow. And I said, well, this is the first time I personally have grown yogurt. This is my first attempt. And I just, I've seen it over and over. And I've done these type of things over and over. I know that the the what happens with microorganisms, and I said, I'll just I know how to do this. Let's save some money right now. That was another thing. This is one dollar. This is probably a little over around a little over four dollars, maybe five dollars, four to five dollars. There's definitely more than five dollars worth of yogurt in here. We 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 definitely made probably seven eight. Eight dollars worth of yogurt with uh, five dollars or six dollars worth of yogurt. So save us a couple bucks. But anyway, we'll be able to just buy the milk and like you know, I wanted to do it with this type of milk because I personally had a question if it can be made, you know, with uh, all this other stuff added to it. So all this other stuff added to it, like I said, it's um, of course it's fat free. That's what the regular yogurt say they're made with. It says ingredients cultured pasteurized non fat milk. So this is fat free. Uh, I decided to go with organic milk with 32 milligrams DHA, omega 3, vitamins A and D added. And it, because it says pasteurized, I figure the container inside 
the milk inside, it's already pasteurized. It's already got nothing living in it. So introduce the yogurt, yogurt cultures in it and uh, it'll thrive through it. So this is after six hours, I'd say it's ready. We're gonna put it in the fridge. It'll reabsorb that, that way that uh, it's very transparent liquid. You can see through the liquid and see the yogurt underneath it. So we'll go ahead and put it in there and um, that's how you make your own yogurt. And it's, you can see that there's, there's a lot of opportunity in this. It, it'll, um, it'll rejuvenate that floor in your body. You'll be able to metabolize a lot of different, um, you know, food, different types of food. It won't, uh, it helps with your digestion and uh, instead of, uh, and it, it's encouraging me to think about the environment in there. There's, you drink, you consume too much sugar, and you start um, making the environment inside your body more advantageous for the competing organisms to increase uh, infection. You uh, eat too much uh, red meat. You're reintroducing salmonella and E. coli, albeit in you know minute amounts. When you after cooking it, it's still there. You know, and you leave meat. You know, meat out and other microorganisms will come in and attack it or the equine salmonella in it if you didn't if you like your meat rare really rare we introduced this in there to ferment the milk and that in theory it will overtake it well that's what happened this time it overtook the liquid culture and it wasn't there was so much of it in there that there was hardly enough for a competing um, microorganisms whether it be in the air um, so we we did it everything and then we um, we don't want to create that kind of acidic or, or sugar or salt environment in our body and then the yogurt can take hold in our bodies by re, by us re, uh, not the yogurt but the cultures in the yogurt can re be reintroduced in the body increase the population and we'll be healthier from eating more yogurt